Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Hello everybody, my name is Eliza. I'm the Industry Marketing Manager at Formlabs. And with us today is Wesley Jacobs, who is the CEO and co-founder of Printplace, a 3D printing company in Belgium. And he is uh, quite an expert on 3D printing, additive manufacturing, and has worked with many clients in the architecture space. And consider this your free consult with a 3D printing expert today. So here's our schedule for today. Uh, I'll give a brief overview of the Formlabs 3D printing solutions offered for the architecture field. Wesley will take over, introduce his company, go through some of the benefits and challenges of 3D printing in the field of architecture, He'll prevent, present four case studies from clients, summarize with key takeaways, and then we'll do questions and answers at the end. Next slide. So I'll briefly give an overview of the solutions that 3D printing, uh, or solutions that Formlabs has for 3D printing. Some of them you see behind me. So this is the Form 3 Plus 3D printer, and this is the Form Wash and Form Cure post-processing suite, um, some of which you also see in this slide. Next. In addition to the Form 3 Plus, which is the most versatile and offers the highest detail, we have two other printer lines. One is Form 3L, which is a large format SLA excuse me, resin printer. And we also offer powder printing, selective laser, laser sintering with the Fuse 1 plus 30 watt. Next. But really what you're looking for is not which printer you want, you're looking for what materials you want and, and the, the size and scale, I guess, if, that you wanna print them at. But here are some of the materials that uh, Formlabs customers are using in the architecture field today. The one on the left is draft resin, which prints the fastest. So these are great for concept models. White resin and clear resin are super nice for uh, client presentations. They have really nice finish. And for complex geometry, the selective laser sintering printer, the Fuse One, uh, prints in powder. And you, you, uh, I think in this model, the large panels are foam board, but the details, the, the window uh, trim is all powder. Probably what many of you are wondering about is the software workflow, and Wesley will get into this uh, in more detail in his part of the presentation, but step one is taking your model and getting it ready for 3D printing, whether you're doing, um, oops, previous slide, please. Okay, I guess we can proceed. Uh, so <laughs> Wesley can talk more about the, um, the, or, oh, sorry, what, uh, can we go back to the previous yeah. slide? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, getting the model 3D print ready. And then uh, there are different software platforms that allow you to kind of, they, they do the check to make sure that your model is printable. And then you bring it into the form of freeform software, which sends it to the printer. Quickly, I'll go through a few uh, use cases from uh, other parts of the architecture field. So yeah, next. This is a model from the Renzo Piano Building Workshop last year. They used clear resin to do some of the transparent details in this model. And also I believe the uh, figurines, the human figurines, which Wesley will also touch on later. Next. These are three reconstructions of cathedrals in different parts of Germany. Uh, so this is more comparison and, and massing models rather than details. Next. Here's a wider view of that picture we looked at just a minute ago about the, uh, the use of Fuse One Plus together with traditional materials to make these really beautiful detailed models at quite large scale. I think this is maybe one by one meter. Next. A few other uh, workflows that maybe are less common, but I wanted to share as well is that you can electroplate 3D printed parts for lightweight custom hardware. Um, I have behind me actually this model of the Eiffel Tower was 3D printed and then plated in nickel. Um, so you could do this for custom hardware. Next slide. You could also print molds and dyes to make uh, custom hardware out of solid metal. Next. 
All right, so Leslie, I will hand it over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Eliza, for this uh, very nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wesley Jacobs, and I have about 10 years of experience with industrial and desktop 3D printing. I have held several technical sales positions within the 3D printing industry, where I focused a lot on mass production and mass customization applications. And a couple of years back, I also founded PrintPlace. Now, uh, a word about PrintPlace. Those couple of years was actually in 2016, when my business partners and I, we actually had a big dream of coming up with this application that can be personalized, realized by using desktop 3D printing with minimal to no assembly and post-processing, um, and then shipped uh, to an end user, uh, preferably uh, yeah, a, a consumer. We were focusing a lot back then on the consumer. Now, the dream was, of course, really big. Um, so we had to start somewhere. So what we started to, to do was we started prototyping. Um, and because of that, we got in touch with a lot of different applications. Um, and we learned a lot, of course, within several uh, industries. Now, we grew and we evolved over time and eventually we moved to really end-to-end -end product and project realization. So what we did was we really started helping our partners to get from a concept to a serial production in a very efficient, competitive, and personal way. Um, and that is still what we are doing uh, today. But of course, we still have this, this dream that we started out with. Um, and this is why we're currently also developing our own product line and bringing that to the market. Now, as mentioned before, we're active in a very wide range of applications, won't go through them all, um, but I will focus on architecture, uh, which is the most important one uh, for today, of course. Uh, but first, a brief word, word on how we work. And so we have actually two tracks, one for prototypes and one for larger projects or serial productions. Those tracks are actually very similar. Um, and what they have in common is that uh, we really ask our customer for their end use of a certain part of a certain project, the application of a, of a certain part of a project. Um, and then we will advise them on how it should be printed. Um, and this is to increase the odds that that part will be uh, produced first time right. Um, now, as mentioned, these tracks are, are pretty similar. The big difference between prototypes and larger projects is, of course, uh, for, the, for the latter one, that it's uh, much more elaborate. We're going to work on uh, a much more elaborate project proposal discussing all details of the project. There will be more uh, uh, intensive feedback loop through prototyping. And when we arrive at serial production, we're going to do more quality control. The technologies that we're using are most of the time desktop FDM and desktop SLA, and this will also show throughout the presentation. Um, we're also experimenting a bit with desktop SLS um, to, to yeah, start working with the technology, to see the ca uh, capabilities of the technology, and to evaluate how we can uh, include that in our uh, production line. Now, Talking about architecture of 3D printing for architecture, there are, of course, a couple of benefits. And if we start talking about the benefits of 3D printing for architecture, at least according to the books, um, then what you, will, what you will see or what you will hear is that, of course, the technology will speed up the model making process um, because you can immediately start producing your 3D model. Um, you can create professional models with complex shapes and intricate detail. Um, as Eliza has shown in some of her applications, and as I will show in some of mine as well. Um, you can improve the communication internal and external project stakeholders because you can really sit around um, the model, the physical model, and talk about it. Um, and you can talk about the project as a whole, about a whole, for example, whole building, scale model of a building. Uh, but what I found important to mention is that you can also talk about details of a project. So you can also use 3D printing to realize parts of an otherwise traditionally made um, scale model. But you can also use 3D printing to start prototyping yeah, 
parts such as these facade patterns. And this is an application that I've seen in the past where they prototype the facade pattern using 3D printing before they started really uh, producing it in the final material. Now, of course, uh, every technology also has its challenges. Um, and I'm sure that um, those of you who've been active in 3D printing for architecture also bumped uh, into some of these challenges. Uh, the first one being, of course, design for additive manufacturing. And so most of the challenges and even most of the preparation of every 3D printing project, be it architecture of, uh, or another uh, application, will be in the design for additive manufacturing step or uh, really designing your project for it to be eventually 3D printed. So you really start calculating the, the production step into or, or factor that production step into the, the initial design step. And there what we see is that, of course, architecture companies are using a lot of BIM uh, software. Uh, for example, they start designing a whole project. They include a lot of details and thinking about desks, chairs, fences. Um, then they scale it down um, to, to the right dimensions that they would like to have it printed. Um, and eventually uh, what, what, what will be the case is that many of these details can actually not be printed to um, even yeah, more, more, let's say, extensive cases where even the walls are too thin to be printed. And there we really see um, a difference between parametric uh, BIM software and non-parametric BIM software, um, such, as, such as SketchUp. In parametric BIM software, you can easily hide um, all those details. You can even select the walls, increase the, the thickness of those walls. And although it will not allow you to get to and like an immediate, uh, immediately to a 3D printable model, um, you will get a long way and the whole project doesn't need to be completely redesigned uh, for it to be printable. Um, but of course, I also know that, yeah, companies, not all companies are working with, um, with parametric BIM software. Uh, some of them are, or, or most of them are even using non-parametric BIM. In those cases, it can be really advised to include um, a 3D printing expert uh, into the dialogue. Um, so as from the moment that you know that the project will eventually be 3D printed, it can be very useful to include such a person uh, so that he or she can share uh, their insights and steer uh, the design strategy, really. Another uh, challenge is design for assembly. Uh, the project eventually will need to be 3D printed. Um, so you will need to take this really the manufacturing strategy into account when you're designing it. Um, most of the time, the models will be larger than the available build volume. So how are we going to cut them up? Um, sometimes there will be internal parts that will need to be accessed. Um, also, that needs to be taken into account, into account, always thinking about how we are going to eventually print these scale models or these parts of these models. There are, of course, several approaches. You can split these by seam, you can split by components. Uh, but for that and for much more, I would like to refer to the Formlabs Architecture White Paper, um, for which we can also share the link in the uh, chat. Um, that includes a lot of um, nice information, let's say, um, on these steps and, and on these processes. Which brings us to the core of um, the session, and those are yeah, the four real-life case studies uh, on architecture. Um, of course, architecture um, is, is a very big collection. It's a very big application. It exists out of um, several sub-applications, um, such as um, scale models of buildings, um, urban models, landscape models, uh, topographical maps, uh, interior architecture, and really to get to a representative image of these workflows, what we try to do is to select four cases from all of these sub-applications. Thank you for tuning into this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.